Welcome to my Secret Place Devotion with Oyix Alfred. The Word of God is alive and equipped to change your life. Good morning. Join me. Let's ask the Lord to help build whatever it is we're building today. Because the Bible says in Psalm 127 verse 1 that unless the Lord is one that builds a house, the builders are laboring in vain. So if God doesn't help you in your business, in your career, in your marriage, in your school work, whatever it is you're doing, if the hand of God is not on it, then you're laboring in vain. So Father, we thank you today and Lord, I come before you with your people today and Lord, I ask that you help us to build. Stretch forth your hands to help us. Lord, in whatever area, Lord, in the name of Jesus, amen, hallelujah. Today, we're going to be answering another question sent in from one of our listeners and, well, I'll be dealing with two questions today. The first one says, after a 23-day fast, I began to speak in tongues and that from what she's writing, she noticed that her tongues were a bit different from how she usually speaks in tongues and it got to a point where she couldn't stop it again. So the question here is, how do I know if this is the Lord, especially if there's no interpretation? Well, the truth is that when you receive the gift of speaking in tongues, you're filled with the Holy Spirit and you begin to pray in tongues. The tongues you're speaking has a tendency to grow. It has a tendency to change. The Bible tells us in 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 18, it says, but grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. To him the glory both now and forevermore. So what the Bible is saying is that you're going to grow in whatever it is that God has given you. It's not meant to be static. It's going to grow. So you grow in grace. So a lot of people that speak in tongues, if you pay attention you notice that your tongues may have changed especially if you pray in tongues a lot if you speak in tongues a lot it's going to change it's going to increase it's going to be more vibrant and all of that and especially if you dedicate yourself to fasting you notice that a lot will change in your prayer language as you pray but the question concerning what about if there's no interpretation remember the bible tells us in first corinthians 14 2 it says for anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to people but to god indeed no one on understands them they utter mysteries by the spirit so meaning that as you're speaking in tongues the only person that understands you when you're praying the prayer language you are speaking to god your mind will not be able to understand what you're saying but it doesn't matter if your mind understands it or not the point is that god who you are speaking to understands it you are speaking in mysteries and you know you're dealing with things that you ordinarily will not deal with in the place of prayer if you are speaking you know in your own understanding the bible says that when we speak in tongues our mind is unfruitful but our spirits are actually speaking mysteries to the lord hallelujah so the second question i'm dealing with today the person says i have given my life to christ but there are times i feel i did not accept christ the right way or god does not accept me could there be anything wrong with my salvation well that's a good question because it's very fundamental to your christian walk if you don't have assurance of salvation there could be a problem because the devil will continue to deceive you all the days of your life you will never be sure of your work with God. You won't have confidence, you know, in prayer. You won't have confidence in the face of problems because you're not even sure if you are born again or not, if you are saved or not. So the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 10 verse 9, he says, if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is your heart that you believe and are justified. It is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. As scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. That answers your question. If you truly with all of your heart believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and that he came to planet earth as a son of God and he died not for his sins but for your own sins and you recognize that you are a sinner and you put your faith in Jesus and ask him to forgive you and you're doing all of this genuinely not because you want to get anything from the lord but because you want your sins washed away if you genuinely you know reach out to the lord like that and then you open your mouth and declare that jesus is lord with all the believing in your heart then you are saved what will happen to you how you will notice that you are saved is that you know the desire for sin will die and your response when you sin will be different from how it was before before you got saved, if you tell a lie, you can't even be bothered. You just move on normally. But now this time when you make a mistake, you feel it on the inside that ah, something is wrong and you immediately want to go back to God and say, Lord, I'm really sorry. That's because you have changed. That's because God gave you a new nature, a nature that does not tolerate sin, a nature that does not want to keep sinning. But you see somebody who is not saved, he doesn't care about whether he sins or not. He just continues going on like that. But you that you're saved, you notice that the desire 
to sin dies completely and your response when you sin is totally different. That's how you know that you have received Jesus. Because when Jesus is in your heart, you're completely different in your relationship with sin, just like I've explained. And you need to make sure that you understand this clearly so that the devil does not cheat you. Once a person genuinely commits to the Lord, he saved. Jesus comes to live in your heart in the person of the Holy Spirit. And then you notice a deep longing and a deep desire for the word of God, a deep desire for the things of God. You always want to be in the presence of Lord. You always want to, you know, study. You always want to go to church. Now, having said that, there are people who used to experience this before, but after some time, the desire begins to go down to so they're probably wondering, oh, does it mean I'm not saved? No, what happens is at the initial time when you give your heart to the Lord, you're eager, you're hungry for the things of God, you're going to church, you're reading your Bible and doing all of that. Somewhere along the line, you might become lukewarm and cold and those desires drop and all of that. That doesn't mean you're not saved. It just means you need your fire reignited. You need your passion for God reignited. Why is it important to get your passion for God ignited? Because Jesus said to us that the moment you abandon your first love, he will no more be happy with you. That doesn't mean you are no more saved. It just simply means that, you know, you need to get your first love back. So this is what Jesus said in Revelation chapter 2 verse 4 when he was writing a letter to the church in Ephesus. He said, he commended them for all the good things they did. But he said, but I have this complaint against you. You don't love me or each other as you did at first. So it is about living your first love. That is when the passion for God, the desire for the things of God begins to go down. It doesn't mean you are no more saved. It just means that, you you know, you need to get your first love back. The Bible says we should serve God in fervency and all of that. So if I read it from NIV version, it says, yes, I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first. God doesn't want you to forsake your first love. The danger of forsaking your first love is you're going to start tolerating sin. You're going to start tolerating unrighteousness and you're going to start living in unrighteousness and that will lead you completely away from the Lord. And that is not a good place to be. So I believe this answers your question. It happened to David. If you read in Psalm 42 verse 4, he says, my heart is breaking as I remember how it used to be. I walked among the crowd of worshippers, leading a great procession to the house of God, singing for joy, giving thanks amid the sound of great celebration. So David here was reflected on how it used to be his walk with God. He used to worship God. He used to lead people in praise. He used to lead people in worship. But all of a sudden, something happened to his walk with God. And, you know, his passion for God went down and he became a bit lukewarm. And that's what he was lamenting about in Psalm 42 verse 4. So you were still born again, but your passion for God has gone down. Like I said, the danger of having low passion for God is that you're going to begin to tolerate a life of unrighteousness and life of disobedience and you're going to go completely off track totally and face the enemy and that is not a good place to be. So if your love life for God has gone down, ask God, Lord, reignite my passion for you and all of that. But if you genuinely accept Jesus into your heart, you are indeed saved. Thank you so much for listening God bless you. Just one bird. For other life-changing messages, you can now download the app Rev Oyik Speaks from Play Store for Android phone users or Apple Store for iOS users. You can also follow us on Instagram, YouTube, and Telegram, all on the handle Oyik's Alfred. Just one passion, one purpose, to know. When I know you, I'll find me. No life outside you. No one besides you. Hey! Let me know you more and more. 
say just one. 